We've made bereavement Oreos. Is it bereavement Oreos? <laughs> He goes, well, well, the testing group liked it. He goes, of course they liked it. It's an oh, Oreo. Oreo. Yeah. It doesn't mean Press A to play. You know, I wouldn't say no to your grabbing your bike in a couple of minutes. Is, That's what is, you're offering is, to do. Just... Is this the start of a cookie pact? <laughs> um, um... A cookie quest. Oof. Yes. It's fair, yes. Quest makes it sound so much less, uh, less juvenile. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I disagree. I think it is lending it the appropriate amount of gravitas and nothing more. I mean, I don't think there's anything as mature as just grabbing your bike to only get cookies. Like, as a kid, I'd never do that because I didn't have the money. And if I did, I would use it for stuff this, like this new games. This is very true. This like, is as a kid, I, couldn't, I didn't have the luxury of being like, fuck it. I feel like cookies. I'm going to go buy cookies. We're adults now. We can do that. Yeah. Right? Isn't it crazy? Who gave me adult money? No. I don't know. Yeah, I completely understand this though. I, my girlfriend bought a box of Lucky Charms. Nice. And I have to admit, I ate more of it than I should have straight out the freaking. There's box. no such like, thing. Oh yeah, no, dude. I I literally couldn't um, keep chocolate cereal in my house because you know those uh, chocolate shell cereals. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, oh, dude. Yeah. I I can't like I I eat them the day I bring them home. There's just no like. I do. There's just no delay. It's just I tell myself I'm not, but then I know I'm lying. The person who developed that, that is, in my humble opinion, Nobel Peace Prize worthy. Yeah. I feel like if just more of the world had that kind of cereal, there would be less of a desire to be violent because you'd be too busy. I mean, you're right. Shoving it. You into are your right. Face. I think you're. I think you're just correct. I I have the same thing with Bunsili Stroopkoeke, which are like Stroop waffles but better. And also, oh. even just plain old Oreos, if I buy like a roll, I'm not gonna have a yeah. roll of Oreos in my cupboard. No. Like, it's no, just gonna be gone in like. This is what you half gotta buy them in smaller packets night. because you're always gonna finish the yeah. Oreo unit. This is just, you have to just understand. The, o <laughs> the Oreo unit is going to be finished by the time you get up. So you have to like, you know, make smaller units. <laughs> I feel like they understand this because they sell Oreos in smaller sleeves in stores. Yeah. Like they know what's up. Yeah. They're like, listen, we're, and they even, they charge you more per Oreo the smaller the packet gets. So there's the cleverness all around here. They are, oh. Yeah, if you, wanna, if you wanna portion control your Oreos, you have to pay for it. You pay the guilt tax. Pay the guilt tax. I mean, one serving is one roll, right? Like that's kind of... That, that should be what it yeah. is. But listen, if I buy one of those packets with three rolls... Have you ever seen the uh, the CEO of Oreos uh, bit on YouTube? There is there is such a thing? Yeah, someone does like videos of... Uh, I think it's Brennan uh, from College Humor does like videos of like the CEOs of different companies. And at one point he was he did one as the CEO of Oreo. And I think my favorite part of that whole thing is that he was like, Guys, you can just go home. We've done it. We've cracked the code. We've perfected the cookie. We're done. <laughs> We're Why are we making product. such ridiculous flavors? What is the purpose of this? Ah, so close. He goes, but we have a strawberry milkshake Oreo. So this cookie is the consistency of a milkshake? <laughs> it's like, well, no. He's like, right. So it just tastes like a strawberry Oreo. Why? We already have a strawberry Oreo. Why is there <laughs> another? <laughs> He's like, what, what flavor is this? Halloween. Halloween's not a flavor. Halloween <laughs> is a holiday. What the hell are we doing? You guys, we've we've made Oreos. We're done. And at one point, someone was like, um, uh, "But we've made bereavement Oreos. Is it bereavement Oreos?" <laughs> he goes, "Well, well, the testing group liked it. Because of course they liked it. It's an oh, Oreo. Oreo. Yeah. It doesn't mean." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are they still doing it? There was a period of time where, like, in the stores, it was a. A different series of Oreo flavors every year. Yeah, absolutely. Month. Yeah. They just keep doing it. I do. And that was I, his point. He's like, why? It's it's Oreo. Our advertising is the entire cookie aisle. Yes. Who I has have, not I heard of Oreo? I have to be honest, Oreo? I do love uh, being cheated out of money for the um, birthday Oreos. I mean, you're uh, paying like 20 or 30 cents extra for just having some sort of confetti thrown in there. But it's just so celebratory. I just fucking love it. Like you open yeah. up, you open up your Oreo, and there's like all these colors there. You're like, yeah, it's my birthday. It's not your birthday, but it sure feels like it. It's good. It's good stuff. I'm a sucker for the double stuff one. Ooh yeah. Every Even time. though they're technically not double stuffed. Really? People have checked it. It's like the footlong from Subway. They're not. Act there's not actual. Actually, the stuffing of two Oreos in there. Like one point. Yeah, you have to go six, mega stuff. I think or something? now for yeah. that. There's a mega stuff? 
Yeah, you know why? Because people like double stuff, so they made it smaller and made a mega stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I totally understand though. It's, I get where it's they're cream going. inflation, is what it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this man. cream inflation will not stand. <laughs> oh, but it does. Wait, I'm not also thinking like, what if you had like an Oreo that was stuffed with another Oreo, just prepackaged like, like that? Oreo section, like Oreo Oreos. Oreos. I like it. Have you tried the Oreo flavored Oreos? Yes. No, I mean the new ones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God what, damn, what about, I miss time every time. What about a Rio E, which is when the stuffing is on the outside? <laughs> Do you ever see that? There was a YouTube yeah. video where they were just taking the syllables and rearranging them and then showing you an illustration of what it would make. Oreo. Rio. Oh. Rio Re. Oh, oh, Re Rio. Yeah. I actually saw this conversation like yesterday on Reddit concerning Pokemon. People were talking about Eeveelutions and they were like, you know what? What if we have like, because Eevee now apparently represents like half of the Pokemon types. Uh -huh. There's like an evolution for half of the types, and they were like, what if we brought in a different Pokemon for the other half? So it's not, because otherwise it's going to be like Eevee representing like, let's say two thirds of all the types if we add more evolutions. But if we just keep Eevee at half and get another one, and people are like, okay, but what if it's like the inverse of Eevee? And they were like, Vive? That could, that, it's not the catchiest of names, but it could work. Vive? <laughs> Get some good well, listen, art on the cover. The, Vive, the Vivelutions could be amazing. You don't know. I'm pretty sure you would get it, Frank. You see? <laughs> Le Leon Sill. See? Le Le Leonum. Uh, what else? Uh, Eon Vapor. Yeah, they would all be like the opposite of Evolutions. <laughs> it's doable. I just want a Dragon Eevee, that's all I want. I just want a Dragon Eevee Lucian. You know, fair enough. I would be happy if I just had like an Eevee Lucian of everything. I don't know why, I just really like Eevee. I'm a cheesy, I guess. I'm easy to please. I like Eevees. Is, is the Pokemon card game still a thing? Oh yeah, yeah. like Absolutely. more than ever. Like they literally sold several billion in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Several billion cards. Pokemon yeah. cards. Yeah. yeah. Like two point something billion. Card games are big yeah. business, bro. But that's a lot of trees, yeah. Pokemon. Yeah, no, Pokemon's still huge, man. Yeah, it's bigger than ever, pretty much. At one point, someone pointed out, you realize that the catch em all slogan was made when there was 150 Pokemon. Kids nowadays have their work cut out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, because it's just been going on since... I mean, it's, yeah. li it's literally the most lucrative property in, in the entire history of mankind. It literally is. Really? Nothing comes close. Yeah, no, not Star massive, Wars, yeah. not Marvel, not Disney, not anything. Pokemon is just that Nothing popular. Nothing comes close, you said. Yeah. It's that, it's that well known. It's ridiculous how lucrative Pokemon is. And it's only been around for 25 to 30 years. Yeah. Damn it. Oh my, and I'm wondering now what the difference in numbers is. Should I be terrified or encouraged by this? I suppose it could you be, be worse. You should be terror couraged. You know what? Actually, <laughs> I, I'm less upset about it being Pokemon than something much, much worse and more yeah. violent. So you know what? I'll take it. Same. Do they? Yeah. So when, when these little creatures fight, they don't actually die if they lose, right? In no, the they manga, faint. they do. Ooh. In the manga, they do, and the creator has stated several times, I believe, that the manga does come closest to his original vision of Pokemon. But it's the manga. It's pretty much the least consumed part of the Pokemon property. All right. Like. The anime show and the games are where it's at, of course. But yeah, and in the, the anime, they really were cool. like, hey, how about in this like mock fantasy dogfighting ring, we don't kill the animals? And it that, is, yeah. surprisingly, you know, struck a chord with little children. Uh -huh. <laughs> surprisingly. Why. They, they flirted <laughs> with the... I mean, even like the first Pokemon game, like on the Game Boy, of course, had like the... In uh, Azealia Town, I think it was... Where you had like this tower that was just like a graveyard. Well, yeah, ghost tower was yeah. a whole special thing that though. Was, like, that, that was, was good. known. Yeah. It was well, this yeah, whole sad unknown story. Unknown was of course only until you know gold and silver. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. See that then it was known. Yeah. They were just known at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, the ghost cubone made a lot of us upset. Yeah. There's so many disturbing Pokédex Pokédex injuries as well. It's well, just, that's I mean, yeah. a whole. The the ghost Pokémon are just solid Lovecraftian nightmares, yeah. and we all just need to accept that. Oh wow.
Like, dude, Yaw Mask is one of the Pokemon. It's a little ghost, it's a cute little ghost that carries around a gold mask. Uh, it turns out it's its death mask. Oh. And it is perpetually weeping because it is staring at its own human face from when it was human and is aware of its own lack of humanity now. No! That was so... Wow. That was this, unfair. This level is a mofo, huh? Yeah. Yeah, um, you know, I'm also not very good at this, which I'm sure is not helping, but yeah, this level is not great. See, whenever I miss a beat like that, it's just done. Um, I love that there's now apparently also an evolution of um, Mankey and Primeape that basically states Primeape is so bad at keeping his emotions um, under wraps. He's, he's so bad at not losing his cool that he's just consumed by anger. And I believe he actually basically dies and turns into like a vengeful spirit. That's like the new wow. evolution of Primeape. Oh. Where it's just like this corporeal so angry, embodiment he has of a heart attack and comes back as, as an just angry pure spirit. evil, just pure anger and frustration. And yeah, it's just it's weird shit. It also, sounds like exactly the sort of thing we should be marketing to kids. Right, like the the ghost that cries at its own death mask, also, or the other one that's just a human being that chokes you to death. Magikarp can jump over mountains. So that's cool. Right. Uh, See, Blastoise could pretty much just rip apart a tank with its uh, water cannon. You know, like, that, it could that easily be the kill way a human you... with its water cannon, easily. That's wow. the way you should experience Pokemon. Yeah. Fun facts followed by ghost facts. <laughs> you know, it's... <laughs> Pikachu stores static electricity in its cheeks. Yamask is having an existential crisis at all times. <laughs> <laughs> fun facts you know? followed by non-fun facts. Yeah. Unfun. <laughs> That's the only way. You know, Eevee can evolve into many different Pokemon types. Cubone wears the skull of its dead mother on its head. I mean, it's... It's an aesthetic. I if, mean, if a Magikarp survives a long enough, it becomes a dragon. If a Charmander's flame goes out, it dies. Oh, yeah, that's... yeah. Rain is very dangerous. I see. <laughs> like, they're just, they're just... Fun fact, unfun fact. That is the only way I think I've decided. So in the minds of uh, most of the people playing it, though, when the Pokemons like lose or whatever, they, they just only get faint. knocked they, out. In the games, something. they only faint; they never die. And yeah. in the TV show, I don't think we've had any Pokemon actually die. So. No, no, no. In the TV show, they don't let them yeah. die. But nice. uh, yeah, in the original manga, yeah. Oh no, no, no! Me, 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 me! Okay. Yeah. So in the manga, we're not upset they die. about that at all. Nope. I'm totally getting better. I swear. I'm not, but it's okay. No, you are. You yeah. are. Look at that. How smooth. Buttery smooth. Like velvet. That just reminds me of George Costanza, who would dress in velvet every day if he could. If he really? weren't frowned upon, he would just dress up in velvet all day, every day. I thought George Costanza would dress in sweatpants. No. He did velvet. once, and Jerry criticized him for yeah. it, I think. All I remember about Costanza is that one line about him running around a, an office angrily holding a manila folder so that no one realizes he doesn't know what he's supposed to be doing. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, I always look busy. I just walk places angrily holding a folder. And I love it because I'm like, you, I, you know, I think I know real people for whom this is just this is just their job. This is what they do. They just run around angrily <laughs> holding a folder and hoping no one realizes they don't know what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, no, I believe that. I also believe in the angry scrolling technique. You want to be left alone? You glare at your screen and you scroll. That's furiously. Fair. But you have to like really glare at it. You have like to you have to like, like, it. like it insulted your mother. Like it like, has to like. I'm in the middle of crisis mode here. And oh, safe point. Yes. Oh, finally. Was that a safe point? Oh, and this is not ground. Thank okay. Well, it's Lord, good thing I have a safe point. <laughs> That's why they put it there. Exactly, because they knew they were like, oh, after all that, you're just gonna walk right out into this, aren't you? Another thing that I'm realizing I love about this game is there's no pause in the action. No. No. Just non-stop. I go. dig it. Yeah. It's an incredibly ADHD friendly game and I love that. <laughs> oh, oh is that why I like it so much? Ah, Maybe, because yeah. like that's the thing, when there are no action pauses, like that's that's part of what we love. It's one of the reasons I like Dark Souls. <laughs> Just wait until the cutscene hits about the, you know, depressing background story of the main character oh, and no. the burning of their village and Right. Yeah. Yeah. How did that. I miss that? I hate it when it happens. Yeah. Yeah, like right, right in the middle, they'll be like, yeah, by the way, this little, cute little fox uh, was actually human once and died. And this is their version of hell uh, as seen through their dissociative lens, for they cannot handle the madness. Anyway, 
This jello pudding is cool. Yeah, it was all just a psychotic episode while your main character is being taken care of. And if, yeah, just no. You know, much like, no. uh, much like Super Mario thought he was smashing bricks when he was murdering the citizens of uh, Toad Kingdom, so too does Shrine Fox believe they are gathering paper cranes as they tear their heads, the heads of their victims off. Oh, that's right. The blocks ended up being... Yeah, they ended up being people. toadstool oh, characters. Yeah. yeah, so like... A little so dark. A cool. little dark there, yeah. Mario. Accidentally dark, I think. I saw this other hilarious video online that took the 8-bit graphics of the original uh, Super Mario Brothers, but like tried to emulate what would actually happen if you tried to smash a block with the top of your head. <laughs> and so, so Mario goes to break it and then hurts himself really badly and then basically just crumples to the ground going, ow! I mean, <laughs> but like an 8-bit. I love it. I think he's raising his fist. I think that's the idea. Yeah. Oh, he's breaking it with his fist. Yeah, you yeah, can that see was him the... jump up and then his fist basically hits it at the same time or like one pixel before. Yeah, everyone yeah. thinks that it's it's his head, but Miyamoto has clarified, I think it was yeah. Miyamoto, has clarified that uh, he is in fact raising his fist. Which is of course also his like iconic pose where he's like... Uh, right, yeah. yeah. And also the fist he whacks Yoshi with when he wants him to spit his tongue out. You just have to make it weird, didn't you? <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a little weird that like, you command Yoshi by whacking him on the head. Like, I thought Yoshi was uh, your friend. You're just literally walking around just like, thump. I mean, that is what humans do with horses as well. We basically put stuff in their goddamn, in between their teeth and we yank their head to tell them what to do. Like This is very true. We this do some weird, true. we do really weird and, stuff to animals. And we traumatize animals. We spank them. Yeah. We spank them when we yeah. want to go faster. We, we traumatize animals like the animal stick and the lot. carrot, right? I mean... <laughs> That's one way of looking at it, well, yes. We also but it sometimes jab sharp pointy objects into their ribs in case oh. that doesn't work, you know? Yeah, yeah like okay. horses are, are mistreated a bit. Oh, also, this is the best track of the game so far, like music-wise. Yeah. I just love this one so much. I, I could live with soundtracks like this just being more, you know, present in the next couple of years. Yeah, because video game music was cool. You know, you would find this music that was sort of engaging and uh, maybe well, a bit repetitive, but I, managed to stay interesting I, despite that. I would say that the evolution of um, sound technology for games has had a similarly negative effect as the evolution of graphics um, processing, as in with games being able to more and more look like anything you want, Way too many companies have decided that, oh, perfect, now we can just make it look like the real world. So, like, all these games have similar art directions. Yeah. And the same goes for music. Like, so many big budget games, especially these days, have just, like, a very reminiscent of movies soundtrack. Like, this orchestral generic soundtrack yeah. where you could just easily put it in, like, any big blockbuster that got released in the theater. And, like, the, like, the unique feel the unique sound of gaming soundtracks has more and more kind of been lost to time mm. and this feels like yeah this is this is a game soundtrack like it's not something you would hear in a movie or um in a tv show or it just it works yeah it sounds like a video game yeah, yeah. well see like i think the the homogenization of of big games was bound to happen no yeah. matter what because if i think if there's really been any effect it's that as uh, graphics capabilities and things have improved, the cost of a big budget game has increased. Yep. And the more a game like that costs, the, safer the less you're risks. Gonna, yeah. yeah. Just look at Avatar 2 as well, for example. Like, it, exactly. How much did that thing cost again? $350 million. Entirely too much. Yeah. For the most uninspired story, zero character development, uninteresting art direction, bad pacing. It's just, yeah. More than the Aelita movie they could have made that would have been better. That's, that's my take. But the people love their blue alien. They, they do love those tall Smurfs. Yeah. <laughs> but I, they, yeah. but they don't. How much money? It has to make some ungodly. Number not even. At the not, not even per se. I. He, uh, it was kind of taken out of context. It's probably already beyond the break-even point now, and it made like uh, a billion in the first twelve days already. So yeah. Really. And. I mean, I'm not sure how much the marketing campaign costs, but like just to break even with the budget, you would need a box office, a, a box office of 700 million. Around that point, you would break even for the, the production costs. And then let's say the marketing campaign was 100 million. 
So that would make 450. So after 900 million, you're already making a profit. So yeah, they're, they're breaking it in right now. And there's going to be a third one and a fourth one and a fifth one. Yeah, I'm definitely it's, checking out after this one. I, I, yeah. I mean, I did go and watch it because, yeah, okay, it was kind of fun, I guess. But the second I feel like I'm just being baited into some series of movies without any, like, actual reason for the story to continue, you know? Like, you just made me sit through an entire movie just to show me that you want me to watch another movie. It feels like, a, it feels like a dressed up tech demo. Because that's, that's what it that's is. That's my it's, problem it's, with it. Na narratively, it is awful. There's nothing in there. There's literally nothing in there but a stock standard white savior yeah. story, which like in 2023, like this is the story we're, we're pumping, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. It just nothing about it is like interesting to me. But he's blue, Cal. But that's the whole thing. Like that's I mean, <laughs> you're right. Putting him in blue face makes it a lot you, better. You, uh -huh. end, you end up with this when you have a director like James Cameron being able to spend three hundred and fifty million dollars on a project that he only is interested in for two reasons, and those two reasons are his obsession with the ocean, which is well documented, and his obsession with technology and CGI and 3D and rendering and all of that. So okay. there's no interest, like Listen. they gave $350 million to someone who's not interested in telling a story, having interesting characters on screen, yeah. creating a beautiful world. No, no, it's someone who wants to shoot films in the ocean and who wants to try out new cool technological innovations, but there's no actual creative like motivation there whatsoever. So that's that's how you end up with something like this. Yeah, I mean that's super fair, right? And like it's it's a little maddening because I don't know, like there's nothing there's no, nothing of substance there. There's nothing yeah. of substance there. And it, it drives me a little bit wild. And uh, but thing, like yeah. That's the thing about the homogenization of, of mass media, right? Pop media, whether it's movies or music or video games, you know, in an attempt to appeal a bit to everyone, you end up with something that doesn't fully appeal to anyone. Uh, but it works well enough for people to buy the product, though. It's that's like, the thing. It's, like, like, it's, it's always the middle of the bell curve, it's right? Like so shitty nobody's coffee. fully satisfied. It's like, like Starbucks coffee or like McDonald's burger. It's like no one is going to say they're actually good burgers. No one's going to say it's like amazing coffee, but it's just good enough and available everywhere that you're bound to buy it at one point or another. Right. And that's Yeah, like my, my thing is more like, okay, so if I were to like compare like McDonald's burgers to like a movie so bad it's good, you know, like like McDonald's burgers are kind of like the Mortal Kombat annihilation of burgers, right? <laughs> like, I would say Burger King is that because Burger King actually just goes for it, just like over the top, just salty, you know what? gooey badness. I would agree with you. That's and true. McDonald's so, is just generic. McDonald's is just cardboard on cardboard. Maybe it's just the room. Slathering of of cardboard. It's just it's just the room. Yeah. Um, but regardless, <laughs> like okay, yeah. fine. But like what I mean is uh, is this is the homogenization is, is in. Um, if there was someone out there who liked burgers and someone out there who liked hot dogs, they would make a hot dog burger that neither person likes just so yeah. that half of them will buy it from each group. Yeah. Right? And, and when you do this continuously, all you have are camels. You only have things designed by a uh, committee and not even a real committee, but what we think that committee might have wanted. Yeah. <laughs> and it is absolutely ludicrous, right? Like it, it makes no sense to do things this way, um, but it makes the most money, so capitalism. And we come back to my central thesis, capitalism sucks. <laughs> well, there's also the long tail, which is still, of course, like a thing in, you know, economics and retail where, you know, you basically just focus on all of the niche things. That also works. I mean, it like, does, but like yeah. big studios don't really do that. They don't take risks. They don't. It depends. If you look at Netflix, they're actually, for example, pretty efficient at just getting a lot of random things that appeal to very specific smaller groups of people because it's just more efficient than trying to make that one big show for everyone so yeah, they'll have like their see, costume drama and they'll have like their horror thingy and they'll have like their anime they'll have like this is true to some degree but i would argue that most of those shows are actually camels oh they're horrible like, the, the majority of, of yeah. shows nowadays are just camels in different set dressings and it drives me absolutely wild it's literally the same crap and it it reminds me almost of Disney Channel movies at this point. I feel like that's where we're going. All TV shows are just Disney Channel comedy TV shows. But this one is dressed up like The Witcher. <laughs> this one is dressed up like, you know, Wednesday Addams. And that's not to say oh, that yeah. I don't like them, right? I actually really like oh, Wednesday. Oh. Um, I actually, I'm definitely going to be watching season two. Uh, I did not like Witcher Blood Origin. 
I thought that was a little I don't silly. think anyone did. Like, not even the most hardcore of fans. Like, it's been amazing to, to see the backlash for that show. Like, wow. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, like, my point is, like, it doesn't mean I don't enjoy them to some degree. But for instance, if I was going to watch a show about Wednesday, if you told me there was a Wednesday Adam show, I would have expected it to be significantly more brutal and less uh, Disney Channel moralizing, uh, you know, the real value was the friends we made along the way. I mean, the fact that show. everybody's just talking about her dance moves kind of says... I mean, yeah, and, and Jenna coordinated those herself. It's not like they gave her actual instruction. Um, the actual actress just did that herself. She figured it out herself. To dance. Uh, yeah, she like they told her to dance, but they didn't tell her how, and they didn't give her much direction. So she looked up how uh, goth kids used to dance back in the era when like goth was young. No, oh. like she basically looked wow. up like old school rave goth like stuff from when uh, when that was a thing and um, copied their moves. Uh, for me, I, I the one thing that I just really really. Um... That really makes me sad is the fact that there's pretty much only been one major studio actually making big budget quality productions over the last 10 years and that would be Warner Brothers because they put out a lot of shit sure but they've also been cuffing up the money for Blade Runner 2049 for Dune for stuff like that and they're now of course merging with Discovery Channel and I'm pretty sure we're going to have to say goodbye to those quality big budget productions. So that means that every single movie that's going to get produced for like 100 million or more is just going to be the same generic bullshit like everywhere now. Like yeah. from Universal to Disney to Warner Brothers to like everything. It's just, so my hope is that it's uh, going to be a little like video games where we know the triple A's are always going to be homogenous, right? No. Like that's just what they do. But there's enough tools out there that individual people and smaller studios can also make their own games. And that's where you get all the experimental stuff and the cool stuff and whatever else, right? And I'm hoping yeah. that uh, minor filmmakers will get to host their stuff on more platforms. Because like at the end of the day, what does it cost a platform like Netflix to host a movie? Nothing sure. unless it's so terrible it like ruins them politically, right? Dude, it's, so, it's, it's still a shame though, as in I'm not gonna be the one promoting like big studios and throwing money at the screen but at the same time like a lot of amazing artistic creative endeavors have been able to come to fruition because of big budgets like something like shadow of the colossus needed a big budget mm -hmm. and yeah, also yeah. like important landmarks in cinema have needed big budgets there have been amazing films with bigger budgets and i mean obviously like on an art like on a like on a deeper level, there's not that much interesting about something like Jurassic Park, but it's still like a really important landmark film, I'd say. And that also needed its budget to be what it is. And to have to say goodbye to that in its entirety just kind of hurts. Like, I, I mean, I don't disagree. Yeah. It's just that, you know, I, I have no faith in those studios no, to be willing yeah. to experiment. You know, I'm just, I just don't. I, I think that... Oh, it's not going to happen, no. We're, if there we're not were more, uh, you know, control in the hands of the actors to some degree so that they could... Uh, what did I miss? Which pathway did I miss? Um, if there were more control in the hands of the actors so that we could more easily tell... Um, or rather, they could more easily inform their characters... I think you would see less homogeny, but that's just not likely to happen, right? And so, I don't know, I, I have very little faith in them. You know, I think they're always going to be homogenous because they always listen to data and they don't actually account for any contexts or anything like that. And in the end, uh, they will always end up doing what was popular a short while ago because their data seems to tell them that that's what makes money. True, but at the same time, like for example, the whole sequel, prequel, reboot, whatever wave that hasn't that's only been around this century like if you look at like the biggest box office hits of 1994 or 1977 you're pretty much only going to see original works maybe something based on a book for example but most of the time it's just only original films and that did work and that did get a huge return and i i can i can like westerns dominated at one point and like big burly man dominated cinema at one point. Um, I can see people, get, I mean, you already see it um, with some of the properties out there, but at one point people are just gonna be tired of just only having reboots and sequels and whatever. I'm already the there. I feel like yeah. I've been there for a year already. 
When and I feel kind of bad saying it, you know, but like when DC was like, oh, we're gonna reboot with Black Adam, I was, I, I was, maybe it's a good movie. I didn't even bother looking into anything about mm -hmm. it. I was kind of like, man, I've seen so many Batman films already. You right. know what I mean? I, I don't like. Yeah. You're gonna reboot? We're rebooting again, but this time it's for real. Like I just. It's like yeah, there, there's no there's no faith that this reboot means anything. Right and yeah. and. That's fair because they haven't executed it properly before. So why should it? But also because it's a reboot, like, can I please get something original? I, at this point, I'm rather curious just to see, you know, a fresh attempt at something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I'm I mean, so unfortunately... frustrated with what I see that I don't even bother looking anymore. I'm not looking for a fresh attempt. I'm just not watching anything. I'd rather kind, go to YouTube same, and like yeah. hear somebody tell me all about uh, how something is built or like some random historical thing or whatever than uh... It's actually the same. I've been using YouTube for video essays way more than I've been using all of my other streaming services combined pretty yeah. much at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's fair, yeah. See, like, I like um, shows that are trying to do something original because like I haven't watched them yet, so I'm not going to like necessarily say they're great but I have heard uh, of like a lot of projects on Netflix that are doing something experimental like uh, shows that can be influenced by the audience or uh, the new one uh, Kaleidoscope apparently presents itself in a different order to everyone so mm -hmm. that everyone sees the same uh, events from you know different characters perspectives but which perspective you see first is different and oh, that's uh, there's like different orders in which they show you how things happen and this tends to affect how people feel about the story um, I think stuff like that, it's a little experimental, is incredibly interesting. Like that, I think, is where things should go. That um, is interesting, yeah. So they're, they're playing with the format, actually. Yeah, right? Like, I, I kind of like that. Where It's kind of like a, a show that accounts for the modern-day way of watching a show, right? And I think that's the way we need to go. I, 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 I I'm not... For me personally, I'm not sure about that because it, I mean, we've also been heading more and more in the direction of playlists and I don't see that as an improvement per se on the concept of albums. And I, I'm, I'm not sure that sort of completely going with what a modern audience is doing is always the best choice. Not, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for me, for example, like the, the best things I've seen in the last couple of years were just really really focused like really well written classic shows like succession or better call saul um oh yeah so that's, I that's better call saul. Or, or something cool and conceptual like um severance like stuff like that like, like there's a lot of cool stuff out there that doesn't have to you know come up with a new format or a new shape or a new doesn't have to be based on an existing property like I, I I do think there's still plenty of space for just classic drama and I mean call me cynical but when I hear about like experimental formats on Netflix it to me if I look at the history of Netflix like the way they've um, been trying for example to get video games on there and the um, whole Black yeah. Mirror uh, choose your own adventure stuff it feels more like a marketing thing than them actually stimulating like creatives doing whatever they feel like. But I could, again, that's just maybe me being cynical. I mean, I don't know, right? It depends on, on how much the people working on it really had passion for it, right? Because mm -hmm. for me, it's all about the passion projects, right? And I don't know. I don't know uh, who had genuine passion for it, but I mean, I'll take it. It's new. It's novel. It's not normal. You know, I'm tired of normal. I was did, so disappointed in uh, in the Witcher thing. Do you, haven't you done all of this? Yeah, I feel like I haven't. I'm what not entirely missing? sure what it is I'm supposed to do next. Cause I don't, like, I'm like, did I miss something? I must have, right? Yeah, oh, I, mean, I have no idea what it might've been though. But I feel like I've watched you nail all of these several times already. Should we just restart and see what happens? Can I just restart the level? No. No, apparently not. You can, but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, because this thing doesn't work. I tried jumping in that thing. Try again? It's bigger now, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, hey. I think All you right, well, there you go. 